welcome to the Christian Center Church Podcast. If you'd like to sow into this ministry, you can do so at the link below. Thank you for joining us, and we hope the message today will bless you. Hey, how many of y'all believe today God's got something for you? How do you mean believe God wants to reveal His Word to you? How many of you believe He wants to do it? Well, stand up with me, and we're going to bless it, and we're going to get after it. Amen. Precious Father, we just come to you in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father God, for the word. We thank you for this place. We thank you for these ministries. We most of all, Father God, thank you for a people, Lord, that chase after you, run after you, Father God. And we ask you today, Lord, to touch the word and lessen me more of you. And I ask today, Father God, that you encourage your people and direct them. And we'll just be right where you can reach us, Father God, in hearing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, give him that hand clap. Be seated. Glory. Yeah, you got to be within hearing range. Amen. Amen. You, I, I'm going to minister this morning, making the difference to receive. How I many you know you can make the difference? You know, I've heard people say, ain't no use for somebody going around. That ain't going to make no difference. One person can't change nothing. Yeah, you can. One person can change things, especially in your life. <laughs> One person can change. You know, to receive means to be given. It means to be presented with, or even the very word paid could be the word receive. You know, and what God wants you to do is receive what Jesus has paid for. Can somebody say amen? You know, when we and we alone have the power to bring increase or nothing to our life. Now, listen, I've seen look like people bless and God run them down and bless them. I've seen those things. I, I, I've seen it, but that's not usually the way that God works. God works by faith. How I many y'all believe that? How I many y'all believe that he works in the confines of the word? If God's going to do anything now, he's going to do it with his word and he's going to do it with anybody. He's going to do it with people. He said, well, you know, they got a flock of chickens over there, and they look like the Lord sent them. No, God didn't send chickens. He sent brave people like you. Amen. <laughs> but two things you got to have. You got to have the Word of God. You got to have faith. Now, we're talking about receiving. We're talking about, about going to be here Sunday night. We're talking about tr- uh, Wednesday night. We're talking about trust. We're talking about uh, uh, Thanksgiving. We're talking about things we ought to be doing. Amen. And we're just coming back circle to find out how we can get done what we need to have done in our lives. I don't know about you, but sometimes I need things done now, not tomorrow. Yeah. Come on. But I'm not always looking and waiting for tomorrow before I ask or before I get started. Amen. I try to get started now. You know, that, but we make that effort and to understand that what we believe in the Word of God and what we don't believe about the Word of God, what we believe we can receive will make or break us this day. Right. So, well, I, see that guy said, supernatural thing happened. Something just great happened. So, well, what did y'all do? He said, I don't know. He said, I just believe God. I prayed and it happened. Then you get somebody else. Say, well, well, we're four days into this fast. We're, we're, we got 15 people praying and, and we hadn't heard yet. Come on. See, it got a lot to do with what you're receiving and what you believe about receiving. It's got a lot to do with that, how it comes into your life if you're going to move toward what God has for you. Now, if God said we need to be in a certain place, how many of you know Israel had to be in the promised land? They had to get up out of Egypt, get up out of the desert, get up out of not wanting to, to enter into the promised land. Amen. He didn't bring the promised land to them. They went to the promised land. But God's always had a people. Don't ask me how. Because I've I read some bad people. I, I read stuff in the Old Testament. I read well, and when the uh, historical fact of the flood that he talked to people for 120 years and still all their thoughts and all their imagination was wicked. Come on, there's some people out there. Let me tell you, but in the midst of that, in the midst, just like what's going on in the world today, there's a bunch of people that it's not caring about God, not caring about what he's going to do or what he's doing. They don't care about him. But let me tell you, he's going to raise up a people that's going to believe and going to receive. And I'm telling you, they're going to get it just like the children of Israel got it. Amen. We're going to go on the cross. He's always had a people. He's always had a, a, a Moses, a Noah, somebody to go ahead and believe in. We might as well be this generation of people that believe God and go get what he's after, what he offers, excuse me. You know that, that it's up to us. Well, if the Lord wanted me one of them, he'd, he'd get me one. I remember the first time we spent $300 at church. I don't know about you, that was a lot of money one time at church. Now, I had them $3 offerings and change. That's what I was getting, $5 offering. <laughs> but let me tell you what. We was praying for a prayer, uh, not a prayer system, but a sound system. We was praying for a sound system. By side, somebody said, just pray. God will just drop us one. Sister Wanda said, well, if it hits the ground, it won't be no good. <laughs> you can do all your <laughs> So, you know what we did? We began to just take up money, get us an idea, did a little research on what we wanted, and we found out what, 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 come on. 
And we made a way over to receive what God had for us. Come on. By believing him and taking good sense and doing what he said. Can somebody say amen? You know, God's word is, I mean, you know, God is not a respecter person. Hey, he won't do for some people what he won't do for you. This is good news. You know, he, he, some people spend a whole lot of time in the wrong place trying to receive of the Lord. When he tells you to do something, that's what he wants you to do. Not do what you want to do or what a little bit you want to do. You know, the best place to understand what we have is find out what Jesus did. And then what Jesus did, it, it has set us on the road to freedom. It has set us to that place that we have a mindset that we can be sent somewhere and receive something. God's got something. Even when I don't have all the answers, God's still got something. When I don't really know what God's going to do, he still knows what he's going to do. When it doesn't feel good, God's still got. Come on. Go with me to Luke 4. You know, and the best place to start is to understand what Jesus has done. You know, some of this stuff might be basic, but not everybody in here understands what Jesus came to do. You know, but, you know, Jesus came to, and, and you, most people you ask, and say, what did he say, come to die on the cross? Who knows that's not enough to understand what he's done, that he died on the cross? Come on, because the, a whole world of people know that he died on the cross, but have no idea the power of it, what he did, what he accomplished, what he done for them. They have no idea about that. So when Jesus came, he came more to do something more than just die on the cross. As wonderful as it is and horrific as it was, as the great benefit that we have with it, Jesus came to do more than just die on the cross. Can somebody say amen? amen. 16th verse. said, so he went to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue as it was his custom. He stood up to read the scroll of the prophet Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah and with, handed it, when handed to him, he rolled in it or turned in it, and he found the place where it was written. Now, that was probably a, a, a New English. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the who? To the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. He sent me or to preach deliverance to the captive, the recovering of the sight of the blind, and to set at liberty those that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. So what did he do? He come to set us free. He come to prison break people's life. That's going to be a prison break around here if you'll let him. Can you say amen? Don't you imagine when, 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 when Peter and Paul and Silas is in there singing, and it said at midnight they begin to praise and they begin to sing, but they said they came a big noise and said, and everybody's door swung open and everybody's chains fell off. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> now, I wouldn't want to be in there for your socks, but let me tell you that God had a plan to get them out. Can you say amen? You know, uh, he said the Spirit, because he had anointed me to preach. Good news. How many of y'all know it's good news? Yeah. Who knows you got to receive the good news? He's talking about delivering the brokenhearted. Who any of you ever been disappointed, been brokenhearted? He's talking about to deliver the captive. You see, when people are captive, they're captive by religion. They're captive by their own minds. They're captive by their own upbringing. They're captive by their, the, the way that people told them. They're captive with drugs and alcohol. They're captive, but he came to set the captive free. He admits there are people who are captive. Now, it doesn't, they don't need another program. They need Jesus. Amen. Now, hey, hey, your thing, and that's good, everything, but Jesus is my upper power. Jesus is my power. I see him. I, I tell you, he won't fail. Amen. Now, I admire somebody who wants to go somewhere. Do it. Please do it. But let me tell you what. When you get to the end, you'll find out Jesus is still the, the answer. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You know what he wants to do is bring liberty. 20, jump to 23. And Jesus said unto them, surely I'll quote you a proverb. To me, he said, physician, he said, heal thyself. Do here in your hometown what we've heard you do in Capernaum. Now, they got there and they kind of challenged Jesus. You can challenge Jesus, but Jesus don't need to be challenged by people. He got down to his home place. He got there where people really had a problem receiving him because he's a local boy. Got down there where he was at and they wanted him to do something like he's seen them do somewhere else. Jesus said in 24, I tell you the truth. He continued that no prophet is accepted in his hometown. Amplified, uh, King James probably says his own land. He said, I assure you that many widows in Israel, in Elijah's time, and when the sky was shut up three and a half years, there was a, uh, there was a severe, with a severe phantom throughout the land, that Elijah was sent unto them, but to the widow of Zorphath in the region of Zenim. He said that, sent him. He said that there was a lot of people that he could but God's fixing to send somebody with a greater need than the prophet had. Let me you know what people do. People find, a, find the best place to get in. 
to do something. But let me tell you what, God wants to work in the place that he's put you in. People will never receive exactly what, come on, what he said. Now, he told me, he said, now, out of all the widows in Israel, said, I had to send somebody off program. I had to send somebody off site. I had to send somebody out of covenant because it's somewhere else. It's, you know, let me tell you what, God will use sinners to bless you. God will use lost people, listen to me, and be careful because I mean it when I say it. God will use lost people to speak to you. You say, that, that can't be the Lord. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Say, prove it to them. I always love it when they want me to prove it to them, Amy. <sighs> Had a man beating a mule. And the mule spoke to the man. And they asked him, why are you hitting me? I mean, I don't know if God can use a rooster and use a, use a, 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 a ass that he can use you most likely. Most likely. But what we got to do is make ourselves available and do what he said. He said, I had a lot of them there. He said, I had people. Now, now, Miller translated. He said, they had potential. They was there, and I had Israel was full of them, but I had to send him to a widow that I could get something done with. See, what we need to do is is, is, we're in charge now of our receiving. We're in charge of what we're going to get. You're going to have to do. Now, first thing we know that Jesus comes set us free. Second thing we know, he set those at liberty, the bruised, the the sick. He talked about in prison. He talked about the recovering of the sight. How many of you know I'm looking for a miracle? Can you say amen? Amen. He said these things, but I had to send him offside. I had to send him somewhere else. Look with me in 1 Kings 17. And you know that that, that, that at the time now, Elijah's in a brook. He's in a brook, been there three and a half years. And you know, sometimes ministry won't move until things dry up. Sometimes ministries won't move. And the Bible says he stayed there till the brook dried up. You know, he had flesh, had fresh flesh every day. To, uh, uh, the ravens bringing him flesh, bringing him there. And he's, he's hid out at the brook. He's got, he's got water. He's got everything. He's, he's by himself. And, how you, and, you know, now God's challenged the prophet. He's ch- challenging the mature Christian. And he's going to ask us to do something we would not ordinarily do. Go somewhere else. Do something else. First Kings 17, 7. And sometime later, the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. We're talking about three and a half years. Can you imagine that three and a half years, no rain in Louisiana? Man, we have to get our shrimp from somewhere else. What are we going to do? Word of the Lord came to him. No rain that day, and the word of the Lord came. You know How many know that makes all the difference is the word of the Lord? Somebody say something, said, well, did the Lord leave? Well, the Lord really didn't tell me, but I'm going down there. Well, take your chances. See, but if the Lord tells you you'll do all right, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it sounds like, no matter who's on board, no matter what other people are doing, you'll be fine. Can you say amen? amen. It says here, and he, he arose and went. Now, he didn't just lay around and think about it. Lots of times he can't get it to us because we got to think about it and overthink it. He arose and went to Zorphat, and there he came into the gate of the city, and behold, a widow, a widow woman there gathering sticks, and he called her. And said, fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. How I many you know sometimes God asks you to do things look like you can do them? Yeah. Now, you ask him there. He's in the city. Must be a well. You know, it's, it's somewhere there. It's water. It's life. There, there, wouldn't, there wouldn't be a community there if it wasn't water there. Yeah. So, he asked him for something simple. Sometimes God asks us for something simple. And when he sees us begin to move and be obedient to what he asks, he'll step us up to the next place. Some people, we, we want to get back to being stretched here. How many want to get back to being stretched? You may get up doing things you need to be doing. Get up and, and dare to believe God. Get up and, and believe his word. Stretch yourself just a little bit. He stretched himself. He went over there just like now. You got to understand he's out of covenant with these people. These are not his people. They, these are not Jewish people. These are not people that ordinarily would have kosher food or anything. These, these are not. But how many of you know that if you obey God, it's going to be all right? God will never listen to them. You ought to write this down. God will never ask his people to do what they cannot. He will often ask his people to do what they thought they could not. God will never ask his people to do what they cannot. But he'll often ask his people to do stuff they did not think they could or they think they cannot do. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that challenging? Isn't that man? Taking me up to the next level, 11th verse. He said, and she was going to fetch it. He called her. And said, bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. It upgraded. Now, you got to know it hadn't rained three and a half years. If we ain't had no three and a half years, likely two and a half years, we hadn't had a, a, a grain harvest. 
Likely, likely it's nothing as much there. Now, can you just think about it. these. They, these are agricultural-driven people and herd people. These are agri- they get a little bit off the ship. But what's going on in this part of the world is going on in much of the world is shipping into them. Let me tell you, he stretched her, got ready to go, and he said, "As you go." I mean, you know, sometimes God asks us to do what we're going to do, but when he asks for that other, that other 10%, that other 5%, that other 3%, <laughs> forgiving them one time, he's done it again. I've got to forgive him again. I, I forgave him five times. I'm not, well, Jesus said, Peter asked how many times? Seven. Jesus said seven times 70. I think you ought to be in another room. But, they, but anyway, I ain't letting them offend me for the 400th time. I'm moving. And he stretched her, and he told her, he said, now bring me back a cake. You know, and what she answered, she answered out of the limitations of what she knew. Sometimes we'll never do what God called us to do because we answer him out of the limitations that we see. We limit him with the information that we have. And she said, as the Lord thy God liveth. And actually, she was saying, as your Lord lives. Now, see, she's not covenant people. She's not saying, as our Lord liveth. She's not saying, as the great uh, uh, Jehovah lives, that our God. He's not saying, say, your God. Now, listen, a lot of people would not believe that God would send you somewhere where he has not favor or a good reputation. I ain't going over there. Ain't none of them people love the Lord over there. Well, he sent this man of God over there. She said, bring me a little water. And she said, all right, I'm getting busy. She's cooking. She's getting her a couple of sticks. And I think in the King James says two sticks. <laughs> Get the two. You can't cook much with two sticks, but you can't cook anything with one stick. How many of y'all know one stick won't burn? One log won't burn. It won't burn. You can put it there. You can start a fire. Out. It just won't burn. It just won't catch up. But when you put something next to it, it'll burn. She knew what was coming off. She, she got the deal. She got ready to go back. And she said, now, Lord, God, he said, I, I have not a cake but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I'm gathering two sticks that I may go and dress it for me and my son that we may eat and die. Everybody said die. Now, now, do you think for a minute that you serve a God that would send you to people their lack is so great they're going to eat their last cake and they're going to die? I'll be like, give it to the kids. Don't die. I got some people that said, well, give me both pieces of the cake. If you're dying, you won't need this later. Give me that. Do, but do, do you see how he has to be obedient? Do you see how he has to believe God? Do you see how he believes that no matter where God sends him, God will make a way? She said, go down to non-covenant people. She said, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, your God said, I don't have enough to make I don't have a cake. I got a little flour. I'm going to make it, and we're going to eat, and we're going to die. And Elijah said unto her, fear not. How I many of y'all know that, that that's how we are? You know what? what you know what? Now, listen to me. Being a people, I would understand this. Now, my first thought when he said fear not was this, that he knew what experiencing fear was. Up to this point and where he was at. And when he spoke to her, he spoke out. Don't fear. He spoke what he got over. Come on. He said, fear not. Go and do as I said or thou hast said. And make me therefore a little cake first. And bring it unto me. And after that, make for thee and thy son. And let me tell you what. If we will get to that place and believe God where he sends us, that God will challenge people to do their very best for the kingdom of God. He doesn't say, what do you do? He said, wait a minute, no fear. Go on down and make me a cake first. How many of y'all know God wants us to put some things ahead of ourselves? Yeah. How many of you know when God's on a mission, he wants you to, to be part of it, but he wants you to put him first? Come on. He said, go down there, typifying the, the man of God, uh, typifying the type of ministry, the man of God, typifying that where God was moving. And he told him, said, do something that'll stretch you. Do something that'll make you uncomfortable. Do something that don't make sense. Sometimes you just got to do what don't make sense. That's probably not good English, but it's true. And he said, bring me, and after that, ye and that son. For thus saith the Lord of Israel. Now, he, he, pulled, up, he, pulled, he, pulled, the, he pulled the trump card. And I'm not talking about the president trump card. He pulled the trump card and said, For thus saith the Lord God of Israel. The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. 
And she went and did according to the sayings of Elijah. And she and him and her house did eat many days. The church said many days. And that the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the crews fail. According to what? According to the word of the Lord, which Elijah, a man of God, spoke, that got up out of a dry brook that had to change his life, that had to obey God, get out of his comfort zone, and I'm going to send you to a non-covenant, send you somebody all program. I'm going to send you somebody, and they're going to hold you up. We wouldn't dare do that. I was, Lord, that's a lot of vulnerability right there. And you know, they don't even love the Lord. They don't even sing amazing grace. <laughs> they got nobody on drums. We get uncomfortable. He went there and you know, he told her, he spoke into her. And he told her, you go do what I'm telling you to do. And then he began to speak prophetically to her and tell her that it's not, it, it, God has got. How many of y'all believe God's really got what you got? When you give to him and you release it from him, and things are coming your way. When things come, sometimes you got to get up from where you're at in faith. Sometimes you got to get up out of worry. Sometimes you got to get up out of discontent. Sometimes you got to get up out of those things. Sometimes you got to get out of stuff that's comfortable and go do what he said. I'm going to tell you the truth. I like comfort as good as anybody. Can you imagine that? For the rest of the time that, that they ate many, de- many days and the meal and the oil didn't run out. Now, listen to this. Now, I'm, I'm moving along. You know that, that God, God not only made a contract with the woman to be obedient and take care of the man of God type of ministry or type of the call or the mission that God has given. Called him to do that. You know what God did? God supernaturally made covenant with oil and meal and a barrel to stay. Now, think how far we've come. Think how, how, what it supernaturally has taken effect here. We're going to take two sticks. We're going to bake a little bread. Me and the boys are going to eat it, and we're going to die. But if we change around and get ready to receive, if we go where we're supposed to go, do what he does, it's up to us to have a change. I mean, you know she would have never got meal if she would have never made the bread. I mean, you know, she would have never experienced a full barrel. She would have never finished, experienced a flat, so all crews not running out. I mean, she would have never experienced these things. And he said, thus saith the Lord. And she didn't. Her life was changed. Now, if God can do that for a non-covenant, off-site person, what can God do for believers? What can God do for people that really embrace the Word of God and believe that that's just not some story, but that's an historical fact that God sent a man of God to a place and increased with those that didn't even believe him? We ain't going down there. It's a bunch of heathens down there. Well, that's what we said too. <laughs> you know why? We don't want out of that comfort zone. Well, now they, what are we going to do? They might be cussing and drinking. <laughs> what are you saying? They're acting just like you before you got saved? <laughs> I mean, that's your people. I mean, don't get mad. Isn't that crazy? That how, how stuff becomes wrong if you're on this side of the line? Yeah. One guy says, you know, I think it's a sin for you to get mad. The Lord says, sin, uh, be angry and sin not. And just don't let it go down until your sun goes down. He said, it was about 12 o'clock before I got over it. Some people want to use it the way they want to use it. Come on. Look in 27. We got, got one, one more place for me. Let me jump one more play. They didn't say yes. I guess that's it. We'll have y'all back tomorrow. There, somebody said go for it. Amen. Look at the 27. Luke 4, 27. Now, Jesus is telling me, and they're telling them about getting something done in their town and for him to work miracles like he did somewhere else in Capernaum. He wanted that to happen. And Jesus said, I come set you free to come get people out of prison. I come recover the sight. I come to do these great things. I come to do all these things. He said, do you know I could have sent him to anybody, but I sent him to, him to a non-covenant person, and supernatural things happened. And Jesus continues in 27, and there were many in Israel with leprosy at the time of Elisha the prophet. Yet not one of them was cleansed, only Naaman the Syrian. Now think about what Jesus told him. He said, yeah, it was a bunch of people had leprosy. A bunch of covenant people had leprosy. A bunch of God's people had leprosy. He said, but the truth was 
None of them was healed except a non-covenant person by the ministry that y'all had problems with. I mean, I know they had problems with Elijah and Elijah. They had problems with him. Get on out of here. Don't let him say nothing. You know, I had men of God. had a man of God. And he said, what's he going to say? Don't get him. said, he's going to say something negative if you get him. <laughs> Some people don't want to hear what God says. Come on. You know, it's after the anger of putting away his own will and after putting away his lack of obedience that this man of God, this great man of battle, Naaman, this great commander, you know, God wants to use people small and great. Come on. You see, God wants to use people, but you got to get past their intellect. You got to get past their experience. You got to get past how they are used to doing things. And he went down there to the man of God and he wanted him to come out in his attendant. Told him, he said, go and wash in the Jordan. He said, go in the Jordan. He said, there's several rivers to be cleaner than that old nasty Jordan. He wouldn't go down. He griped. He complained. You know, sometimes God asks for us not too much. Come on. At least he didn't ask him to go bathe in Bayou Grove State. <laughs> Maybe. And you know what? That, 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 that commander, you know, he, he did everything he was told, and it, it was about to change his life and restore him because things, listen to me, just because things don't go the way we think they ought to go doesn't mean that God's not working. Amen. And he went down there, he said he could. He said it was many people in Israel said they had the leprosy, nobody's getting it. He said, but this is the deal. There's people that I can send to, and I can still get stuff done. Isn't that a wonderful? Yeah. You see, what we do, we, we waiting on people. We're waiting on situations. We're waiting on the government. We're waiting on this to open. We're waiting on that to close. Come on. Yeah. Go with me to 2 Kings 5, and I'm going to get you out of here. 2 Kings 5, 13. You know, that, that if you really come to the place to understand that anybody that receives of God, you got to get up to receive. Can you say amen? Now, I know he'll say that, take that bed and walk. I, I, I know that, that he told him to go wash, amen. Sister, one of I was talking about the, the young man that, that, remember the guy that went and washed in the pool of Shalom? Remember Jesus spit and made spittle and mud and put it on his eyes? Now, listen to me. I want you to know that as he was going, he still tripped and stumbled and felt his way over to the pool. I tell you, the, as he was going, he was still getting there. Amen. And people getting out of the way and some people not getting out of the way. You ever been somewhere where people won't get out of the way? He went down there and finally fell in the pool and he got cleaned up and he got his eyes and he got his sight restored. And his mama said, what did he look like? He said, I just got a glimpse of him. <laughs> he didn't see him. He said, but after I come up out of that water, he said, and I saw him in the temple. I saw him in the market. He said, I got a good look at him. He was Jesus. Amen. I mean, you know, sometimes you don't see clearly the first time, but if you hold on, God's going to do something. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. You had to go do it. Uncomfortable. Who would, send, who would send somebody to another place where it's not even his people and be somewhere non-covenant and going to see a supernatural miracle that we're going to talk about 3,500 years later? Yeah. My God. Yeah. Your God. 3,500 years later, we're talking about it. Yeah. 13 first. And his servant came near to him and spoke unto him. Yeah, he's trying to get him to go do the deed. He's trying to get him to go bathe. He's, he's trying to get him to, to come under. Thank God. Something, now, let me tell you, his attendant, look at me, I'm going. The attendant is a type of the Holy Spirit. You say, well, those are not covenant people. Well, just bear with me a moment. The Holy Spirit, you know, the Holy Spirit, is, we just said he'll speak through anybody, anything. We said he'll use anybody. He's not a respecter person. This is what he does. He said, and the servant came to him and spake unto him. He said, my father, if the prophet had bid thee some great thing, would thou have not done it? How much rather than then do thou sayest to thee, wash and be clean. And he went down and dipped himself seven times. Somebody said he went down. Got up where he was. He, got, he didn't go down there and dip four times. He didn't dip three. He didn't dip six. He dipped seven times like he was told. And he told him, he told him, he said, no, if he'd asked you some great thing, you know, I mean, he's a military commander. He, if you, you send him somewhere with 20,000 men, he'd go over and wreck, wreck shop. He'd go over and do what he wants to. He said, but if he'd asked you, he said, but now he's just asking you to go and bathe and dip yourself. You know, sometimes what God wants out of us is not that hard. And sometimes God can send us to people that don't have a clue. But God does. Yeah. See, we won't go. We don't know. We're waiting on that. We're waiting on that. You know, do this, that, to go. Quit waiting on that. Just be sent by the Lord. You'll be okay. 
He said, everybody had leprosy and couldn't get, nobody got healed, but this man, off-site, non-covenant person, got healed. Why? Because he was obedient to what the man of God said, and he was willing, come on. And then he went down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan according to what the man of God said, and his flesh came like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Woo! Man, I'll tell you, no acne, no, no scar tissue, amen, looking good, Amen. I guess after that, they called him baby, say, baby face uh, naming after that. <laughs> he didn't want to fight, but he'd get thinking about it. <laughs> baby face. Like a little child. And he returned. Now, now look, look what we can learn. And he returned to the man of God. He and all his company came and stood before him and said, Behold, now I know. Now I know that there is no God or no other God in all of Israel but there is no other God but in Israel now therefore I pray thee take a blessing from thy servant you know what people when God really works in their life they won't do something before God get online with him work with him amen you know that that when Jesus came he came to set the captive free how many believe that how many believe that you have to get up and respond to what he wants how many believe that Naaman had to get up and respond to what the man of God said Let me tell you this morning, you're going to have to get up and respond to the Word of God, what it said. You're going to have to, and it may look uncomfortable. It may look like it doesn't make any sense. It may send you in an area that you're not used to. It may go someplace that you say, man, ain't nobody down there playing my favorite song. But if you'll go down there and let God be in charge, he'll change things. You know, you go on, you you read the story, and and when Jesus got through with them, they they got mad. How I many you know sometimes it makes people mad what the Word of God says? Yeah. And it says that they got angered and they took him down to the end of the hill and they wanted to throw him out, throw him down. Well, I want you to know they rushed him up, but Jesus went right on through the crowd and went on right back. Let me tell you what. I got a Jesus that's going to return, and there won't be any rough handling Jesus when he comes back. Won't nobody be taking him to the end of the hill to try and throw him off. Ain't nobody going to put him on a cross. Ain't nobody going to do it. When he comes back, he's going to be living large and taking charge. And that, come on, we got to believe him. We got, we got the victory coming. What we have to do is come to the place to believe he said it to me as well as he said it to anybody else in this room. You know, when I get up there, you know, Brother Jerry and I, you know, and I get kind of, you know, more into it. And no, now's their day. Now's the day of salvation. Now's the day to see God. No, now's the time to hear the voice of God. Amen. 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 What do you do with that? Yes. Yeah, I wonder, you know, and I wonder this morning, how many opportunities have we missed because we didn't want to go where Naaman's at? How many, uh, excuse me, where the prophet was at? How many we really didn't want to go over there? It looked like we were too far out of our comfort zone. Yeah, you know, but when we get settled down and believe God, things will change, things will happen. How many you want things to happen? How many want things to change? How many you want to walk toward God, run toward God, whatever, be pushed toward God, whatever it takes for us to get to where he's working? Now, listen to me. Do you believe that God could have brought the meal to him? He could have brought it and said, I'm looking for somebody. They said he was in this dry ditch here. I got him some bread. I don't even know why I'm here. This, this bread, all right. I mean, oh, God could do that, but he wants you to go down there and find the bread and make the bread happen. I mean, y'all know the bread wasn't baked. He came down there and got, got it happening, got it moving. Amen. How you know that Naaman never got healed till he got something happening? And when somebody said, if he didn't ask you for something else, you'd do it. You see, we, we'd rather pick our jobs. Oh, my goodness. I guess we'd rather pick our job. Well, y'all, you, you, when I was a kid, y'all don't know. Yeah, when I was a kid, not every car had air conditioning in it. Now, believe that or not, they didn't. And we'd find somebody. We, was, we wasn't going far, about four blocks. We weren't going somewhere. But we wanted to ride in the one with the air conditioning. We'd be stacked up in there like sardines, but we'd ride in the one with the air conditioning. We was cool. You know, we didn't mind. You know, some people, if it's not air conditioning, they're not going if not, it's not just the way they want. Let me tell you what. Won't you stand with me this morning? I want you to know that God can put you out of your atmosphere and put you in his if you allow him, you see. God will get you out of your own stress. God will get you out of your own stretch of your own and get in his. And he's got a plan. Can you say amen? Got a woman down there. She, what's she going to do? She's going she gonna to make a little bread. We die. 
end up with meal, get, end up with food for, for a very long time. This morning, I want to encourage you to make an effort to receive. Do what he says. He comes to set us free. He comes to do these things. And without him, we're going to fail, church. But with him, we're going to succeed. I mean, I believe there's great things lie before the church. I mean, that, I said, I mean, believe great things lie before the church. Now, the world ain't doing too good. Amen. They're not doing too good. But the church is going to do great and powerful things. Amen. We're going to see miracles and signs and wonders. Man, we want them. We long for them. We look for them. We need them. Amen. But you know what we got to do? We got to reach for them a little bit. We got to push in them and maybe get ourselves a little bit uncomfortable. There to be challenged. So I, I, I don't believe the Lord would do that. Well, let me tell you, God do anything he wants to do. But he will never do anything against his word. And he'll never do iniquity. And never do wrong and never do evil. Amen. Now, I'm not working the way I want it done, I'm not working the way you want it done. It's pretty possible he'll do that today. But I want you to know that if we'll get up where we're going and believe who he, who he is sent. And Jesus just basically told him, I could just said this and got down. He said, I'm these, I come to get the, set the captive free, rescue you guys. But you're basically like them other guys. You got to be put in a bad place. You got to be put in a dry brook and sent somewhere and you see me move. And somebody else be covered with sin and have to come and see me move. But each person had to move toward their deliverance. Each person had to move forward to what God had for them. I mean, I believe God's got something for you. I mean, I, I mean, supernaturally, God's got something. Father, we just come to you in Jesus' name, and we just thank you, Father God. We ask you to touch us, Lord God, that we'll come to the place, Lord, that we'll just hear your voice and be a little bit, Father God, inconvenienced, Lord God, and be in that area where you'd have us to be, Lord. Even though down there, Lord God, it may not look like it's a, a great group, Father God, but you're down there, Father God, and you have a supernatural message that will change their life, Father. Not only was the man of God's life changed, Father God, but the persons, Lord, involved, their lives were changed. And we thank you, Father God, that you still heal, you still deliver, you still can set the captive free. You have a plan, Lord, and it includes us. And we thank you today, Lord God. Yes, Lord, we just give you praise, honor, and glory, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. We just appreciate you. This is go out to church, but I believe it's individual that the Lord said he's working some things out for you. He said that he's working them out. If you just allow him to do it the way he wants to, it'll come to pass. And this particular person has tried two times trying something different. And if you'll go back to the time, do it in the way he told you in the beginning, it'll work. I mean, I believe that's that simple but true. I mean, do what God told you. Because you failed the two times don't mean that God's not caring. He didn't tell you what you told you to do. Amen. See, what we do, we get to start wrapping our head around. We start taking the pieces. And, you know, he, he's good and he loves you right where you are. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. Can we pray for you two kids before y'all go back to school? You let me pray for you? Now, come on, don't make me look bad. Come on, let me pray for you. Man, I thought this was going to say no. Aren't they sweet kids? Amen. Good looking children. Where's the rest of them other two? They sit y'all down here to do this by yourself. <laughs> y'all, they, they go to school. Y'all get ready when y'all go back. 18. That's not, it won't be long, will it? No, it let's, y'all just point your faith there and let's pray for them. Father, we just loose angels around these children, Lord God, these young people, and we just loose them front the back. And Father God, we just ask that the Holy Spirit go with them, Lord God, and we just loose and protect them. And Father God, that they're such great soldiers in this time with all the crazy stuff going on out there, that they would just remain, Lord God, to be who they are and trust you. And Father God, we speak good things in their lives, the spiritual, the physical, the mental, the financial. And we thank you, Lord God, for just great things. This be a great year for them. In Jesus' mighty name, and the people said, Amen. Give the Lord a big hand clap of praise. Amen.